Thank you, Dr. Pedrosa, for kind uh, introduction. My name is Takeshi Yoko. Um, I'm one of the abdominal radiologists, and I specialize in body MRI, and that's what I want to talk to you about a little bit. <clears throat> the purpose of this talk is uh, to shed some insights on uh, the radiation and contrast-related issues in diagnostic imaging. Um, and uh, uh, body MRI uh, may, may be able to provide the the, exactly the, the kind of answers that you need in your patients, but without risk of radiation and uh, contrast-induced uh, nephrotoxicity. So this will be a nice follow-up from Dr. Anant Krishnan's previous talk. I'm going to present this talk in two pieces. First, I'm going to talk about the radiation-related issues uh, with a few illustrative cases. Then I'll talk about uh, contrast media um, considerations um, and uh, with accompanying a few cases. Then I wrap up with summary and a short quiz. So CT and MRI scanners, they look pretty similar on the outside, but the, on the inside, they are actually quite different. Um, CT uses rotating X-ray beams and therefore uses ionizing radiation. Uh, as we saw in the previous talk, uh, typical dose, radiation dose of CT abdominal pelvis um, averages from uh, about 10 to 30 millisieverts, depending on the, the exact protocol, including the double scans. <clears throat> and that's about three to 10 times annual background dose from the background environment. The, uh, there's a theoretical risk of uh, causing, uh, uh, causing cancer through a DNA damage uh, using ionizing radiation. And the exact, uh, in, exact increase the, of the radiation risk is it's complicated, but in general, it depends on the uh, cumulative dose, the radiosensitivity of the uh, irradiated tissue, and the reproductive potential of the, uh, the tissue. The younger the age, the higher the risk, and therefore fetus and gonads are at the highest risk. <clears throat> On the other hand, MRI uses strong magnetic field and radio waves to form the images, so there is no ionizing radiation. Uh, because of the, the physics of MRI, uh, patients with metal implants in their body uh, are at risk and some devices are incompatible, but nonetheless, MRI is free from uh, potential cancer-causing risk. Our um, body MRI section offers comprehensive evaluation of the uh, wide variety of uh, anatomy and pathology in abdominal pelvis. These are um, a select list of the, all the protocols that we uh, um, that have in the body MRI section. So in addition to the standard abdomen and standard pelvis, uh, we, have, we also have specialized uh, protocols that are targeted to answer specific questions, such as local staging of rectal cancer, prostate cancer, and cervical cancers. So um, our first case is a um, 36-year-old female who presents in the emergency room with abdominal pain. <coughs> First, non contrast CT was performed in the ER setting, and they found a mass in the liver. To better evaluate this mass, a full-phase contrast-enhanced CT was, was ordered, and what that entails is a scanning of the liver uh, four times before the contrast, uh, and after the contrast in the arterial phase, portal venous phase, and uh, late venous phase. So as you can imagine, the liver is irradiated four times, four times the radiation dose. <coughs> Uh, so the, uh, the dose for this particular case was 26 millisieverts, and there's, there's a website that you can calculate the, the cancer risk, putting age and sex and all that, all that uh, extra information. And in this case, uh, it approximates the increase in the cancer risk is one in 500. Uh, because of the C this CT finding, um, and would, this was not definitive for any particular diagnosis, so the patient underwent uh, liver biopsy, and uh, this was a um, adenoma, hepatocellular adenoma. So because of that diagnosis and the risk for future growth and hemorrhage and malignant transformation, um, uh, the patient was recommended to have annual surveillance imaging. And MRI would be a perfect um, modality to do this because of its ability to differentiate the different types of soft tissues. 
and also the ability to image the liver uh, multiple times after um, contrast injection without the use of radiation. So uh, this has no radiation, and we are getting the same information as we did in CT. So after four, four, four years, she received four of such MRIs, and uh, we noticed that the, the mass has enlarged and it, beca it became more heterogeneous, uh, raising the concern for a malignant transformation. Um, our uh, surgical colleagues took her to the operating room and uh, did a left hepatectomy. Um, and that uh, pathology showed hepatocellular carcinoma arising in the background of hepatocellular adenoma. So um, this patient had four scans in four years, and it, if this were done in CT, then her um, cumulative dose will put her at an increased cancer risk of one in 100. So cumulative risk matters with the um, uh, uh, lifetime um, cancer development, development risk. Here's another case um, that I got called about in probably uh, one in the morning. 25-year-old uh, female, she presented in our um, um, emergency room with acute onset abdominal pain. She is uh, 15 weeks uh, pregnant. Um, we are fortunate to have a uh, local expert who has pioneered um, uh, pregnancy protocol MRI. So at our institution, this is the standard of care. Anybody who's pregnant coming in with abdominal pain, we do an MRI. <clears throat> so on this um, coronal and axial imaging uh, of this uh, pregnant lady, we find this dilated <laughs> appendix that is filled with fluid, and there's a little bit of uh, periappendiceal fluid. You can see her uh, uterus with, um, uh, with a fetus in it. Um, so this was called as uncomplicated acute appendicitis, and the patient went to OR on the same day, and they found exactly the same thing. So this is um, another case of making a critical diagnosis without use of radiation. Third case uh, seems to be a recurrent theme, uh, another patient with Crohn's disease. Uh, these patients tend to be young, and uh, this is a, a relapsing uh, condition patient will get scanned basically her, um, her entire life. Um, so, um, so MRI would be uh, 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 extremely useful uh, modality to, to follow these patients. So this patient is a 24-year-old uh, female, uh, history of Crohn's disease, coming in with abdominal pain. The initial CT with IV contrast shown here um, demonstrates uh, exuberant uh, inflammatory changes in the terminal ileum as well as the cecum, and there is a stricture causing small bowel obstruction. Um, this patient was managed conservatively at this time, and her bowel obstruction got better, but when she came back two months later, um, where we performed the MRI, uh, it showed similar acute uh, inflammation involving the terminal ileum and the cecum, and for that finding, the patient um, went to surgery, uh, had uh, ileocecectomy, but post-operative uh, post course was complicated by uh, persistent perianastomotic inflammation, uh, recurrent fistulas, and multiple abscesses. In the next six months, a patient underwent five MRIs, two CT scan uh, in the ER setting, and in addition, had three CT-guided drain placement. So if this was all done in, uh, by CT, she would have, she would have got 10 CTs um, in six months, and you can imagine what her cancer risk would be after that. We're gonna switch gear um, and uh, talk about contrast a little bit. So the physics of image formation between CT and MRI are quite different, and so it's natural that the contrast that we use uh, will be different. In the CT, we use iodine, based contrast. MRI, we use gadolinium-based contrast. The iodine contrast we use in CT uh, can be nephrotoxic, and patients with uh, background uh, baseline renal insufficiency are at, um, at greater risk of developing significant renal toxicity. On the other hand, gadolinium has no nephrotoxicity uh, at the FDA-approved doses. Um, so we can safely use this in patients with uh, renal insufficiency, or so we thought. Um, 
we use gadolinium contrast quite liberally in, in the renal failure patients um, quite often. And in 2006, um, we found out about a condition called NSF, nephrogenic systemic fibrosis. Um, and this we'll talk about in a little bit. But before moving to this topic, I wanted to touch on the, the allergic reactions. Um, iodine allergy is fairly common in the general population, a little bit less than 1%. Severe reaction is rare, but it happens and can be fatal. Uh, on the other hand, gadolinium um, can cause allergic reaction, but its orders of magnitude less frequent than iodine, and severe reaction is even rare. Um, and there's no cross-reactivity -react between iodine and gadolinium. So, uh, contrast enhanced MRI would be an excellent choice uh, for somebody who has iodine allergy. It's clearly more superior than doing a CT scan without iodine, con iodine contrast. So, um, nephrogenic systemic fibrosis, uh, NSF. <clears throat> this is a uh, very rare but serious complication of gadolinium. This is a rapidly progressive um, multi-organ uh, fibrosis condition which, for which we have no effective treatment or cure. It causes, it can be fatal. If it's not fatal, it can be quite debilitating. The association with gadolinium contrast was discovered in 2006, um, and the postulated mechanism is the, is the um, gadolinium contrast staying in the body, not being excreted, and the, the metal, the gadolinium metal dissociates and deposits in the soft tissues, uh, causing uh, intense um, uh, fibroblast activation. So the patients at risk for NSF are end-stage renal disease patients on dialysis, patients with acute kidney injury, um, and patients with GFR less than 30. So these are the patients who cannot excrete gadolinium after injection very well. Um, in response to the um, FDA box warning that was released in 2007, the American College of Radiology uh, came up with a set of recommendations. And at UT Southwestern, we adopted the, uh, the recommendations and we developed the practice guideline. And the gist of the guideline is basically uh, the patients who, whose GFR is less than 50, so they are um, in end-stage renal disease, they are at the, the most risk of developing NSF. Although it's um, one to 7%, uh, because we have no effective treatment, uh, we, uh, we would be uh, very careful uh, of using uh, gadolinium in this patient population. So if your patient falls into this category, we strongly encourage you to consider alternative imaging method, including non-contrast MRI. Um, it, it turns out that the, uh, because of the intrinsic soft tissue contrast um, of MRI and various uh, functional imaging techniques that we can use with the MRI, contrast may, ac may actually not be necessary to answer the clinical question. So, um, uh, we can definitely help you uh, decide what will be the appropriate uh, imaging study in this patient population. A uh, patient uh, whose GFR is uh, between 50 to 30, um, uh, we, they are at uh, risk of, potentially uh, at risk for NSF, but we have to weigh the risk and benefit. So uh, whenever you, uh, you are in doubt, please give us a call and we can uh, troubleshoot and uh, find the, the right scan for you. The, um, the patient who will benefit from the uh, gadolinium enhanced MRI is probably the patient who is in this range. So these are the patients in the, uh, in the mild or moderate chronic uh, kidney disease. And these people will be at risk for contrast-induced nephropathy for CT. But uh, for MRI, because gadolinium has no nephrotoxicity, we can use uh, we can do MRI safely in this, in this patient. Um, this case demonstrates uh, what we can do with non-contrast MRI. <clears throat> um, this is a 47-year-old male, long history of bipolar disorder, disorder on lithium, and she has, um, she actually ha uh, sorry, she ha uh, he actually has a end-stage renal disease, uh, but not on dialysis. 
Uh, renal ultrasound performed at an outside institution uh, for acute and chronic renal failure found a questionable mass. Because of the end-stage renal disease status, uh, both con um, and not on dialysis, iodine and gadolinium are both uh, contraindicated in this patient, and uh, non-contrast CT would have been uh, not very not very helpful in this case. So uh, we performed a non-contrast renal mass protocol MRI which actually confirmed a 2.5 centimeter solitary salt mass, uh, uh, pretty heterogeneous, and other MR, MR signal characteristics were not compatible with um, common benign renal neoplasms. So we call this um, a renal cell carcinoma to prove it otherwise. Uh, long story short, uh, uh, this um, mass was uh, biopsied eventually, and it came back as as an oncocytoma, um, which is usually a surgical, surgical um, uh, neoplasm. Uh, but because a patient is a poor surgical candidate, uh, the urologist uh, decided to uh, take a more conservative approach, and we have been following this patient with um, uh, surveillance non-conscious MRI. Uh, another case, another um, overnight STAT MRI, uh, was uh, performed on a 55-year-old male, uncontrolled hypertension, who presented at an outside institution with tearing chest pain. Um, because of uh, his cranium 6, uh, non-contrast CT was performed, and they found questionable um, aortic dissection. And the patient was transferred to UT Southwestern for further management. Um, so in this kind of emergent situation, gadolinium use is probably uh, completely reasonable, uh, and we um, would, ha would have gone away, uh, gone with the uh, injecting gadolinium in this patient. Uh, but uh, the, the relevant clinical question for the uh, cardiothoracic surgeon was, is there an involvement of the ascending aorta? So that will determine whether the patient needs to go to OR right now or can be medically managed. So we thought that we could answer that question um, without the use of gadolinium. So we went ahead and did a non-contrast MRA. So the sagittal and axial image uh, is shown here. This is the, um, the uh, ascending aortic arch and descending aorta. So this flow-sensitive technique uh, clearly demonstrates that the descending aorta is divided into a, a bright high flow uh, a compartment, uh, darker slow flow compartment, and black no flow compartment. So this clearly demonstrates that, that there is aortic dissection, and we are also able to confidently clear the, uh, the ascending aorta that it's not involved. So this type, this patient with type B aortic dissection was uh, appropriately managed medically with aggressive blood pressure control. No emergent surgery was necessary, uh, with excellent clinical outcome. So in summary, um, we see, we've seen that MRI uses strong magnetic field and radio waves to form images, and uh, it uses no ionizing radiation. We have a wide variety of MRI protocols that has been optimized for a variety of pathologies in abdomen and pelvis, and the chances are uh, whatever your, your patient, um, whatever the, the problem that your patient has in abdomen and pelvis, will probably have a protocol to answer that question. <clears throat> Um, contrast enhanced MRI uses gadolinium based contrast agent, which has no direct nephrotoxicity. So, um, gadolinium will be an excellent choice for patients with mild to moderate chronic kidney disease. But, uh, gadolinium may cause nephrogenic systemic fibrosis in patients with renal failure. GFR less than 30 has been proposed as relative contraindication for gadolinium, but we need to weigh the risks and benefits, so uh, please don't hesitate to call us and we'll, we'll find a way to, to get, get you the answers. So in summary, um, in many cases, the body MRI may be an excellent alternative to CT, but especially in patients in whom radiation uh, and the risk of contrast ne nephrotoxicity are of concern. So, uh, question number one. Um, MRI uses very low ionizing radiation and therefore considered safe 
in children and pregnant women. And I don't know if this is actually working. False. Yes, false. Very good. MRI does not use any radiation. Question two. MRI with IV contrast is contraindicated in, in worse than stage four renal insufficiency because iodine is nephrotoxic, because gadolinium is nephrotoxic, or due to risk of nephrogenic systemic fibrosis, or unless the patient is on hemodialysis. Three, right? Yeah, three. <laughs> Very good. So we are the division of body MRI, and uh, the picture is the staff and trainees in our division. Uh, so for uh, any questions related to body MRI or choosing the right scan in, in um, you know, different uh, contexts, please give us a call, extension 52710. Thank you for your attention.